The auditory brainstem implant, or AVI, is a device that brings hearing from the outside world into the brain itself directly so that people who don't have the normal mechanisms for hearing can learn to hear. The steps of an AVI procedure are complicated. The most important first step is evaluating the patient. We really have to make sure that the children have a high likelihood of benefiting from this device. The next step is to actually place the auditory brainstem implant. And this is a surgical procedure. It could take anywhere from three to eight hours to place it. And basically we're placing this electrode into the brain itself, and then we're placing basically a microphone under the skin surface so that it can pick up the sound and transmit it directly into the brain. We then allow this to heal up. The next step is to actually bring the child back into the operating room, sedate them, and test the device. And to test it, we stimulate through the different electrodes to ensure that they're working and that they don't cause any harmful effects on the brain itself. Once we're able to ascertain that, we then do an awake mapping of the device. And this is a prolonged procedure where we do programming over a series of different times where we figure out the best electrodes and the best effect that they can have. And during this process, both the child and the child's brain learn to use the device effectively. Surgeons outside of the United States have been doing ABI surgery in children for 10 years now, but there has never been a safety study. There has never been any regulatory authority to oversee this technology. But the first step by our regulatory agency, which is the FDA, is to look at the safety. We're looking at two aspects of safety. One is surgery, we are doing brain surgery, and two is electrical stimulation of the auditory brain stem. This is an FDA and NIH approved study on the safety and efficacy of auditory brainstem implants. The auditory brainstem implants that we're implanting on this study are to be done in very young children under five years of age. And the reason for that is when we're born, our brain's hardwired to perceive sound and it's hardwired to have speech. But those hard wirings die off over a couple of years if they're not uh, stimulated. So the importance of doing this procedure in a young child is that we're actually bringing in input into these pathways, these hard wirings, so that they don't die off and so that they grow and develop with the child. We at Children's Hospital in Los Angeles are really excited to be a part of this study. And our goal is to implant 10 of these devices over the next several years and to make sure that it's safe to do and to make sure that it has the expected benefit to these kids. August is our first child to have been implanted with the auditory brainstem implant under our FDA clinical trial and our clinical trial grant from the National Institutes of Health. He was found to meet our criteria for surgery. He underwent surgery and yesterday was his first day being activated with his ABI processor. Oh, oh he's not happy, he's not happy. <laughs> Today he came back for a second fitting and now the family will be going home for a month. And then we will see him next month, then three months, six months, nine months, and a year. And that will complete the safety aspect of this study. We have extended the study beyond one year safety to also look at early efficacy, early communication development with the device. So the family will be asked to participate in a series of test protocols at the end of year one, and we'll see them at year two and at year three. To me, the significance of this clinical trial is that we are going to do an important service to the field. Every single procedure that we are developing and continuing to develop we are putting down in forms of SOPs, and in a sense, we will be writing the manual for all the procedures for this technology going forward. The big picture implication to this procedure are that we could help a three-year-old learn to hear, which he wouldn't otherwise be able to do, and learn to speak, which he wouldn't otherwise be able to do. What we're excited about studying is how the brain learns to develop hearing and speech mechanisms after we're born. And so the hope is that we can learn to see how these things develop in August and other similar patients. Thank you.